come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. to know what it is, nosy? Sure. It's from the employment office in Pixley. They have an opening for a laborer to unload gravel trucks. Oh. Well, we are kind of hard up. Billy Joe feels up to it. <laughs> Personally, I like to stay out of things like that. <laughs> Billy Joe, you're just in time. Your mom wants to ask you a question. <laughs> Can't you were upstairs five in the minutes for the discussion club? Oh, I finished those an hour ago. Steve and I were down by the pond watching the beavers build a dam. They're pretty good, too, considering they don't use blueprints. What was you wanted to ask me, Mom? What happens about this time every year in Eagle Springs, Wisconsin? Oh, everybody knows that. That's where the Association of Women's Clubs Recording Secretaries holds its annual meeting. And who gets to be special guest of honor at the convention? The committee looks over the list of club secretaries and picks out the lucky girl. That's right. Congratulations, Billy Joe Bradley. Oh, oh gosh, it's so great. I don't believe it. It says right here, the secretary of the Hooterville Every Other Wednesday Afternoon Discussion Club has been selected as this year's winner. Oh, gee, Eagle Spring. And for a whole weekend. Oh, a whole weekend? You'll have fun. Well, Billy Joe, if you're worried about how the uh, beavers are progressing with the dam, I'll phone you every day. <laughs> oh, it isn't the beavers. It isn't? <laughs> no, it's just that, well, uh, I know, Mom. She just doesn't want to leave Steve. She won't have to. We'll cash in these airplane tickets. Steve can fly her up there and back in our plane. We can pocket the difference. Well, Joe, you should be ashamed of yourself. I am. But being a big business executive, I don't let it show. Congratulations, Billy. No, no, don't bruise those nimble fingers that can take dictation at 98 words a minute and type 120. <laughs> See what's going on. Kate, that's the money you've been saving up all winter for a new outfit. Now you're giving it to Billy Joe. Well, she's got to have traveling accessories, luggage, wardrobe. Severin catfish. She's only going to Eagle Springs for three days, not around the world. She's my daughter, and wherever she goes, she's going to hold her head up with the best of them. Well, I guess I don't need the fishing pole all that bad. <laughs> out a traveling case and an evening bag. Sam, you think I might be able to work in a nice pair of long gloves? Well, we're a little over budget, but I'm more than a little fond of Billy Joe myself. Go ahead, pick them out. Oh, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Selma. Hi, Selma. What can I do for you? Well, that all depends. I may be placing a mail order for several new outfits, plus the complete set of luggage for my daughter, Henrietta. Oh, is Henrietta going someplace? That all depends, too, Kate. On what? 
on the vote are every other Wednesday afternoon discussion club takes on naming a permanent, duly elected recording secretary. Wait a minute. My Billy Joe's recording secretary has been since she was 16. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said duly elected recording secretary. I've been to every meeting since our club was formed, and I don't ever recall voting for a secretary. Yeah, but that doesn't mean... Therefore, that... I'm calling a special meeting for the purpose of electing one. But you have no right to do it. I certainly have. That's in the bylaws, and I ought to know. I pushed through most of them. <laughs> Sam, uh, we'll be holding the meeting here. Here? Oh, no. You always hold them at the Shady Rest. But that's not a neutral location, and this is. But I'm running a business here. All those mouths going at once could keep a windmill turning for three days. <laughs> Kate, tell her it's no go. First, I gotta find out if she's got a leg to stand on. And if you don't, I will be tickled pink to pull the rug from under you. <laughs> oh, but, Mom, how can Mrs. Plot do such a thing? And who'd vote for her side anyway? The members who are indebted to her, and that's half the members in the club. Well, looks like this calls for direct action. And I think I've got the answer. Well, what are you going to do? I'll get out my old hypnotizing act. And I'll hypnotize Selma into thinking she's a frog. <laughs> While she's spending the night in Scoville Swamp, we'll drain the whole thing and her with it. <laughs> you like it, huh? <laughs> Does Selma still play the harp? What in the world's that got to do with anything? We'll go over and accidentally push her head between the strings, and she can twang herself to death. <laughs> Well, so much for brilliant ideas. Now let's think of something practical. <laughs> the minutes. The club minutes will prove that Billy Joe's entitled to the trip. January 27, 1943. Oh, these couldn't be Billy Joe's minutes. She wasn't even born then. <laughs> Keep them coming. Will you stop showing off? You're not supposed to read them minutes. Just bring them in. <laughs> Will you quit complaining? If you was a St. Bernard instead of a sawed-off runt, you wouldn't have to make so many trips. <laughs> Ten-year meetings here. No, no, no. These are from March to October 1954. You women sure do a lot of gabbing. There's more here than the whole archives of the United Nations. <laughs> All right, let's get the rest of them. Come on, Mike. <laughs> Don't tell me it's a coincidence that Uncle Joe was born the same year that slow motion was invented. <laughs> Mom. Just send him on the table, honey. Uh, about this election, I've been thinking, and I... You're not supposed to be thinking. We are going to show off Selma Plout for what she is. Mom. Now, it could be in one of these. I don't think you're going to like what you see there. Hmm? Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you, Mom. The only reason I got the job is that none of the ladies wanted it. Honey, you were only 16. How could you remember Minutes of Wednesday, July the 12th, election of secretary. And here we are. After three hours of squabbling, which almost led to a fist fight between Doris Sipple and Selma Plout, no election was held because none of the ladies wanted the job. Billy Joe Bradley volunteered to do the job temporarily pending an election. What do we do, Mom? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take all of these minutes and we'll stack them as high as we can get. Then you get out of the way, because I am going to jump off. Take it easy. That's my justice of the peace gavel. Well, it may be good for a murder trial, but it sure doesn't work for a woman's club. Try this. Ladies! Sam has been good enough to lend us the use of his store, so let's get down to business. Just a moment. Billy Joe has no right to take down the minutes of this meeting when she's involved in the outcome. Right. I agree with you. Well, somebody has to take the minutes and record the votes. I already thought of that. And my brilliant, unbiased daughter, Henrietta, has volunteered to serve. <laughs> uh, notebook open? The pencil sharp? Right. Just like your father's side of the family. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, did, did, you, did you see that? She's so eager to serve, she broke her pencil. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What applies to Billy Joe applies to Henrietta. She's a candidate, too. Well, doubtless you'll suggest one of your supporters. No. As long as we're meeting in a neutral place, I suggest that we have a neutral secretary. <laughs> Not me. I don't even know shorthand. Well, that's no problem, Sam. I'll instruct the members to talk in longhand. Hey, I'm taking inventory. It'll speed things up and get us out of here. Well, in that case, you're looking at your secretary pro tem. <laughs> Have at it, Kate. Well, ladies, I guess we all know why we're here to elect a secretary. Now, the candidates are Billy Joe Bradley and... My high-speed, competent, non-mistake-making daughter, Henrietta. Mother, I've been telling you I've never taken shorthand or typing. Why, dear, we want that all-expense trip to Eagle Springs. Oh. <laughs> All right, dear, if you insist, I won't tell them that you type 140 words a minute. <laughs> All right, ladies, if there are no further nominations, let's get on with the vote. And all those in favor of Billy Joe being secretary, say aye. Madam Chairman, why don't we have a secret ballot so Selma won't know who's voting against her right to her face? <laughs> All right, let's make it a secret ballot. And just to be completely impartial, both Henrietta and Billy Joe will pass out the slips of paper for the vote. Good idea. Good idea. General Minutes, uh, store. <laughs> what? Yeah, Doris. Huh? Oh, that's too bad. He did, huh? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell her. Right. Doris Ziffel says there was bad ink on that get well card you sent her, and her pig Arnold ate it, and it made him sick. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> now, the girls will pick up the votes, and Sam will tally them. Henrietta? Henrietta? Billy Joe? Billy Joe? Henrietta? Billy Joe? Henrietta. Henrietta's elected secretary four to three. Oh, 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 thank you, dear ladies. You not only have made a wise choice, but the only choice. Hold it, Selma. Your Madam Chairman hasn't voted, and her vote for Billy Joe Bradley Makes it a tie. Floyd, you hand out the freight and I'll check this manifest. Okay, let her rip, Charlie. Two hundred pounds of ice. Two hundred pounds of ice. Coming out. Here's your ice. Next item. Hold it. It don't look like 200 pounds of ice. It don't. Well, funny, the scale said 200 pounds. What scale? Well, our scale's right next to the stove. <laughs> nice by the stove. Next time, use your head. Keep ice on ice. One freight for Selma Flap. Oh, this sure is heavy. I wonder what's in it. I don't know, but it came all the way from Peoria, Illinois. From Peoria? Boy, it must be something real special. Ah. Oh, there it is, all the way from Peoria. A typewriter. Not just a typewriter, an electric typewriter. I can barely type with two fingers on a regular one. Oh, dear. This will speed things up, and soon you'll be typing your way to Eagle Spring. Mother, I'm just not the typing type. I mean, I'm not good enough to be recording secretary. That's not the point, dear. If you don't go, then Billy Joe will go. And if Billy Joe goes, Kate Bradley will be going around town showing off the postcards her daughter, the secretary, sent her from Eagle Springs. Oh, how can you sit there and let your mother suffer? How do you humiliate? <laughs> you mean to be insubordinate, Mother, but aren't you overlooking something? Your mother never overlooks anything. 
<laughs> the election was the time. Neither one of us will be going on that trip. Oh, child, you underestimate your mother. That tie will soon be broken, and I'll be showing postcards from Eagle Springs to Kate Bradley. Mother, there's absolutely no way to break that tie unless you bring in a new member. <laughs> oh, I'd almost given you up. <laughs> You do that so well. Uh, uh, do what? Uh, deliver the mail. You just take it out of your sack, thrust it in the box, and close the door. Well, when you come right down to it, that's about all there is to delivering mail. <laughs> oh, I get it. You think I close the door too hard. I'm oh, sorry. Nonsense, dear man. You close it beautifully. I'm writing the Postmaster General about our excellent service. Through rain and sleet and dark of night. Well, uh, you see, I, I don't deliver at night, and, and I usually wait until the rain stops. You see, I, I, I got this terrible lumbago. I'm trying to praise you. Oh, did I happen to mention there's an opening for a new member in our Ladies Every Other Wednesday Afternoon Discussion Club? Well, no, ma'am, you didn't. But then I ain't much of a joiner. Uh, then, no, no, no. I meant your dear sweet wife. I'd be happy to sponsor her. Well, now, that's great, except for one thing. I ain't got a wife. <laughs> Here you waste my time, you, you bachelor, you. By the way, do you know if Ethel ever got her 35 cents for the get well card for Doris Ziffel? I don't, there's a treasure report. Hmm. Oh, yeah, she did. Hmm. And we're in the black, seven cents. <laughs> you know, some of these women would pay their dues, like... Selma Plow. Well, what do you know? Mrs. Moneybags is three months in arrear. Henry had a plunk. Oh. Quick, brown foxes, indeed. Oh. Practice on something you can use as secretary. The club bylaws, for instance. Oh, but, Mother, they're so dull. Dull? Your mother railroaded through most of those regulations all by herself. Mother. Don't argue with me. I've had enough wrangling with those silly women on the phone all day. Can you imagine? I can't get one single woman to join the club so we can break that tie vote. Well, in that case, I might as well go to bed. You'll type. Oh, just listen to this magnificent piece of legislation. Oh. If I hadn't been fool enough to marry your father, I'd have been in the United States Senate. Another Margaret Chase Smith. <laughs> to be eligible for membership, a person must have been a resident of Hooterville County for a minimum of five years. And a person must have been a resident for five... Oh! Start typing! You're on your way to Eagle Spring! <laughs> Our secretary pro tem, Sam Drucker, is having a sale at his store. The minutes of the meeting will be taken down by both my daughter and Selma's daughter to avoid squabbling. Any objections? All right, all agree. Uh, now, Madam Chairman, I'm in favor of tabling the regular agenda and getting right to the election of a secretary. After all, that meeting in Eagle Springs is only two days off. Oh, Selma, I think you've forgotten that uh, this was a tie vote. Not anymore. At this time, I'd like to introduce a new member. Presenting my new member, Floyd Smoot. Hi, fellow girls. Boy. Hey, Kate, look at my new lunchbox Selma gave me. <laughs> Hear that? Music to digest by. It's real nice. Now, I suppose all you have to do is uh, vote for Henrietta Plout. Oh, no. The, the lunchbox is just for joining the club. For voting, I got this. A Morocco-bound thermos bottle. <laughs> well, I'm sure we're all glad about Floyd's lovely gifts. But, Selma, I think you wasted a lot of money. Floyd can't be a member. This is a woman's club. Well, Madam Chairman, kindly show me in the bylaws where it says a member has to be a woman. Oh, save yourself the trouble, Kate. It says right here, uh, Volume 1, Article 2, Section C, Paragraph 4, quote, 
To be eligible for membership, a person. It doesn't say man or woman. Well. <laughs> Ladies, I'm members. <laughs> Selma is right. The bylaws do say that. And Floyd is a person. <laughs> Aren't you, Floyd? Before I answer that, I don't have to give back my presence, do I? <laughs> no. But let the co-secretaries have it appear in the minutes that Floyd Smoot is our new member in the women's club. <laughs> oh, now that that's settled, that brings the votes to five for Henrietta and a measly four for Billy Joe. Sorry, Selma, but with Floyd's vote, it's still a tie. Quoting the bylaws that you railroaded through, any member that doesn't pay her dues three meetings in a row is automatically out of the club. So, Selma, your vote is disqualified. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, may I say something to the members? Oh, of course. <laughs> members, Henrietta Plout would like the floor. Well, I was thinking, since the vote is a tie, how about settling it with a competition between Billy Joe and me? Whoever takes shorthand and types the fastest gets to go to Eagle Springs. Rihanna, you're out of your mind. I mean, you're out of order. Sit down. I think that's a wonderful idea. I move we have a competition for secretary. Well, all in favor, say aye. 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 Very well. The shorthand test and type-off will take place right after the coffee break. Now, refreshments are being served in the dining room. There's cookies and coffee and, and, and lemonade and... That time I patted you on the head, I think I flattened it. <laughs> Henrietta, your mom didn't seem to think this was such a bright idea. It wasn't. I just want to get this thing over with. It's too much for my nerves. Oh? Let's face it, Billy Joe, I don't have a chance. You'll win and go to Eagle Springs, and my mother will ship me off to Siberia. <laughs> At least it'll be over with. We have an idea. You're practically on your way. Well, gosh, what's wrong? We thought you'd be in the clouds. Oh, I know. It's Steve. Well, you don't have to worry about that. We're going to see to it that he has a wonderful weekend. <laughs> yeah, he won't even know you're gone. <laughs> Mom! Yes, okay, Mom. I've got the typewriter, the paper, the shorthand pads, the pencils, and the stopwatch. Fine. But there's only one thing missing. What's that? The other contestant. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Billy Joe, you're holding up the contest. Coming, Mom. Did you, what happened? Well, my closet door stuck again, and when I yanked on it, I guess I must have wrenched a ligament in my wrist. Oh, my. Oh, it doesn't hurt much, but uh, I guess the contest is off. Or we could postpone it. Oh, no, you don't. There's no time. The convention in Eagle Springs is day after tomorrow. My daughter wins by default. <laughs> well, on account of Billy Joe's sprained ligament, the official winner of the contest is Henrietta Plout, who will represent us in Eagle Springs. <laughs> and I guess that concludes our business for today. Meeting adjourned. Mom, Betty and Bobby are going to do the dishes. I'll help you straighten things here. Thank you, dear. First thing I want to do is get that out of sight. Oh, don't bother. I'll do it. What about your arm? Oh, put the typewriter down. I'll sit here. And I want you to type 500 times, Billy Joe is a doll. <laughs> <laughs> TV Westerns are right here in TV land. And you can see them all in one place every Sunday. 
It's TV Land Goes West, a four-hour block of vintage Western dramas and comedies. Watch TV Land Goes West this Sunday, starting at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, right here. Now stay tuned for Green Acres, next on Nick at Night's TV Land. Petticoat Junction.